I should. All right, I'll start over here. Uh, I must keep my magic magnifying mind on my acceptance and off my expectations. For my serenity is directly proportional to my level of acceptance. When I remember this, I can see I've never had it so good. Thank God for AA. Thanks. Yeah, man. Yeah. Paul, welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, this is just the spirit of what we try to share here. Just putting that spirit in this paragraph, it would be an admittance that I can't keep uh, my mag my magic magnifying mind on my acceptance, but something can. But I can't. I can't produce that effect. But something does produce the effect in my life. So the basic theme I feel of the whole program is the realization and actually getting established in it that something is doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. So. What I can't do for myself is put my magic magnifying mind on acceptance and off my expectations. Let's tell the <laughs> truth. Yeah. So this yeah. is another absurd uh, sense of reliance of self thinking I have I can manage better, which would my managing better would be taking off the attention from the expectations and put it on the acceptance. This is the whole theme of the problem being presented in a statement of the solution, I feel. Yeah, don't you see it that way? Literally, it sounds like, okay, I must keep, this is an order from the Supreme Commander, the, the policeman up in the head, I must keep my magic magnifying mind on my acceptance and off my expectations, good luck. Yeah, that will fail. And then hopefully you freaking get it sooner or later. Self-reliance has failed us, not has, but is failing us, yeah? So when I admit that, then these effects that I wish for, or I want to manage and control and manifest tend to appear and I observe them with a sense of gratitude and humility, believing that something is doing through me what I can't do by myself, yeah? And then it goes, uh, all right. For my serenity is directly proportioned to my level of acceptance. Yeah. I must keep my magic magnifying mind on my acceptance. That doesn't sound like acceptance. <laughs> it doesn't start at acceptance. It starts at not accepting that my magnifying mind seems to go somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, when I remember this, I can, uh, so when you're sincerely on the position, yeah, of this higher power, you've got to remember it constantly because you think you believe you forget it. But then when you get established in it, it takes away that drive or need to remember because you really don't forget in a sense. Yeah. What forgets isn't you you are grounded in that establishment. Now we keep owning mental movements as our movements. So when the mental movement goes, oh, I went there, I left there, I'm not here, blah, blah. If you look at the surveillance tape, you're there as a physicality. All your yapping, I'm, I'm in Iowa right now. No, you're in Hawaii at this moment, yes? So basically, let's just start with the basics. And you can't believe how uh, simple sometimes life can be when the absurdities aren't a starting point. Yeah. So here, hey, something helped me because I can't keep this magnifying mind on my acceptance. First of all, my acceptance. <laughs> is <laughs> another man's rejection, let's say. <laughs> so 
Yeah. So that's how I see it. See, you can take every paragraph and just like when uh, I remember when I first read the book and it says, uh, we cease fighting everything and everyone. It sounded like an order, another order that I couldn't perform. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to cease fighting everyone and anyone. Give me another break. But see, that's not that they were describing an effect of being under the influence of this higher power through the 12 steps the, through, you know, recovery. And then you arrived at, and I'm not, I cease fighting everyone and everything. It's not like an order that you're not going to be able to do like tons of orders. It's going to be, you're going to find out, hey, yeah, yeah. At this moment, I'm not fighting anyone or, or anything. Yes. Wow. I didn't even know I was doing it because you weren't doing it and you're not doing it. You're observing it. Yeah. You're observing it. Something's expressing through us. Like it says in tradition, I think two or five. There's a loving God that expresses through our group conscience. Yeah. There's that, there's a quote unquote loving God expressing through our individual conscience. <laughs> Let's say it's not like it's only doing it through the group conscience, it's doing it through the seeming individuals in the group. Now, yeah. <laughs> not after I accept certain shit. It's now, yeah. That's what allows me to accept certain shit. Yeah. Yeah. So again, you know, all right, my my serenity is based on my acceptance. Therefore, I've got to be accepting all the time. That's the problem talking to us about the solution. Yeah. It's the problems narration of the solution is I got to do a lot of shit that I really don't want to do or I can't. Yeah. So I might as well just say, fuck it. And, you know, take the easiest off the way, getting loaded and let the state cake take care of me. <laughs> and have tons of resentments about the rehab and a sense of entitlement and a sense of uniqueness. They don't understand who it is that's here. Yes, they do. That's what happened with me and Delancey Street. Delancey Street had a much clearer objective take on me than I did. So when Delancey Street was looking at me, they saw the they saw the present me more than I ever did. And when they gave their suggestion to the present me, which I did not agree with in most cases, but always panned out and worked because they had a better clarity about me than I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's something else. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the, I hope this gets across. There's nothing wrong with the paragraph. We're just putting a different spin on it. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, because sometimes we talk about the solution and then it's about how to get to the solution driving the problem, which is we just surrender the problem and we find ourselves in the solution. It's the, the problem doesn't drive to the solution and then become the solution. <laughs> it doesn't. The problem sort of left behind and now you're li living from the solution. Yes. You're seeing the problem. You're not looking from it as much. Yes. Yeah. That's the theme I hope gets through here. That's what we're attempting to imply with all the readings is, uh, this is not a self-help program. It's a reliance on something greater than self program. I mean, and that reliance is now. Yeah. It's not so, uh, what I was relying on it. <laughs> I will be relying on it. No, relying on it. Yeah. What does that mean in actuality? Not relying on self. That's really what it means. Yeah. The relying on the spirit is invisible. You can't lean on a spirit. It doesn't have a body. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't sit in the spirit's lap. It doesn't have a lap. Yeah. So the relying is, is invisible, 
But what's not invisible is reliance on self. It's it's the it's it shows where we are right now and in the condition we seem to be. I mean, it's very demonstrable. It's very clear that self-reliance has failed us. It's incredibly clear. Our whole story, our whole movie is chock full of it. Yeah. But this invisibility of reliance. You know, oh, Paul's relying on self. You can see that pretty easy. Paul's relying on spirit. Not everyone has those eyes. Yeah. But most alcoholics can see another alcoholic in the act of relying on self. They can. (laughs) That's visible. That's able to be understood. The relationship you're going to have as spirit with spirit, you can never. It's always going to be vague, and that's the beauty of it. It's incomprehensible. You can't put it in form. You can't. You can write tons of odes to it, but the it isn't going to be captured in a sense. It's going to be sensed and felt. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, Kerry. Yeah. Uh, Don't you see it, though, a little bit? He's setting out on a course to try to manage acceptance and put it on, try to manage the head and put it on acceptance, not expectation. Isn't that self-reliance? Yes. Yeah. So yes, now it you, is. So then you can start recognizing it in your own life. And oh. then that recognition brings you to recognize it in, in other aspects of your life. And maybe and, it'll serve you. Maybe you'll realize uh, that unsuspected inner resource. Yeah. Because obviously, It's difficult to suspect the inner resource when you're relying on self. That's why it's an unsuspecting inner resource because self forms or acts like a giant blinder to us. Yeah. It keeps us pretty much uh, tuned into one station, K Paul, without, without any other opportunities or possibilities, unless it's possible to K Paul. Paul is always included in the freedom of Paul. <laughs> well, this is the freedom from Paul. Yes. Yeah. So thanks. Thank you. Yeah, man. And I was just thinking when you're saying that, not just myself, but everyone else, letting everyone else be themselves. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. So the, 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 the the diagnosis is great. Yes. Uh, expectations like that's one of the main little sayings we have in our community. We're not in the outcome business. Yeah. Which would be the business of expectation. So and there's no way the head, which is of time, is not going to have expectations. So if <laughs> it's just an insane it's like the programming going into the programming to adjust the programming. It just doesn't work. Yeah, does it? So this is an admittance that I can't stop tending to expectations. Hallelujah. There you go. Yeah. You tell the truth and then things can change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is like the weight. This is what happens a lot in spirituality. Uh, If you're practicing spirituality as a self, uh, it can become very heavy because it seems like you're going, you're being asked to go over your pay scale and it's impossible. So you might, you just say fuck it after a while and just fucking, you know, the person runs out of the meditation hall and goes, gets loaded and, fucking gets a couple of prostitutes ends up it's just it's just it i've got to be relieved of this pos this responsibility yeah <laughs> oh this is much the easier the easier softer way yeah <laughs> just like hey 
I can't get out of this hole. Hallelujah. I've got to get out of this hole. <laughs> I can't get out of this hole. After a while, what hole? <laughs> I was never in a hole to begin with. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Just like uh, Kurt shares and stuff about the self imposed. He used to think it was him that was imposing it on him. And then now he reads the paragraph and sees self meaning other. So something other than you is imposing something on you. That's a much clearer view than I'm doing it to myself. Yes? Yeah, much, it's just, it's the, it's the same statement, but you see it differently, finally. Or the driven by a hundred forms of whatever. What's the attitude the head has all the time? It's the driver. Then you get a description of its real position, which is the driven. What? Yeah. What happens? The, like, the form of the solution is going to change completely. Yeah. It's, you're, you are not going to be the solution. That's having a temporary problem. And if it just manages better and, you know, girds its loins and gets out there, it's going to do it. It ain't. It doesn't. Yeah. This is an admittance of defeat. Not of you, defeat of the system you're relying on. Self-centeredness. Yeah. Yeah. And if you listen to the canary in the coal mine, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kerry. I was uh, yeah. But you see how you read it? It just sounds different. Oh yeah. No, it's just a different perspective on. Uh, yeah, the whole different thing. perspective, and this is what the. Well, for us, you know, sent it on the big book. The big book is a living book, obviously, because it allows a lot of different perspectives. It grows them, really. So when you first get in, you read it. After a few years, you read it, you get different things. Or if you go see a, like people like Joe and Charlie who used to do those seminars, they illuminate the book for you in such a simple manner because their perspective brought about a new perspective in you. This is something we're hoping with these talks, yeah? Is to bring about a new perspective about the exact nature of the wrong. Yeah? yeah. And that it's not you, it's not of you, or you're not of it, yeah? That's profoundly uh, freeing in a sense, yeah? Because the bondage of self <clears throat> appears as a self. That's, that's the act of the bondage of self. You appear as a self. That's the bondage. Yeah. And then you don't want to get out of it. And that's self trying to get out of self. And we've talked about that you know, ad nauseum. So you can't escape from self because there isn't one. In a way. <laughs> yeah. There's a loss of interest in it. Like it says in the book on page 63, you lose interest in self and then a lot of shit happens. Good stuff, yeah? So basically the self was a dam for that living water to come to you, yeah? So the self was playing the role of a dam and keeping a lot of the living water, the energy of life, yeah? And so now when the bond, when self is weakened, the water comes through and now you're refreshed. Now you're sa now you're satisfied and content and you're looking at how to contribute to life and doing all this stuff. Your whole perspective and direction changes. Yeah. And you are the better for it and others are the better for it. It's like a win-win. Yeah, so. A lot of us have been turned already. 
really 180 we've been turned 180 degrees we're looking completely different than we used to look before completely yeah in other words the job is done in a lot of ways the problem doesn't exist for us right now <laughs> that's the completion of the mission now there's the agenda of sharing it in your life which you can't help it because it's you and then may, and being of service which you'll be put to use by the new employer for sure yeah 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 see a lot of times something is arrived at not noticed and you keep traveling to it you don't get that you're already that what you're hoping you've already arrived that way of at what you've been hoping to arrive at we had that perfect example with our friend in england when we were going over the the uh, third step prayer please relieve us of the bondage of self and he was in the habit of doing it every day and then he realized that he was in the present state of being relieved of the bondage of self and his head was putting the recognition of that off by praying for to be relieved of the bondage of self in the future. So he had already arrived at where he wanted to arrive at. It's you don't keep arriving after you have arrived. Yeah. It doesn't it's not the same feeling. There's not the same momentum after you arrived. Uh, it's not like a continual arriving, <laughs> it isn't. It's like sincerely and then established. Established is is a different condition than sincerely, sincerely taking a position, position. Established means there's an anchor, there's some foundation, yes? So like that old thing, you've arrived, babe. And then no peop most people can't take it. They have to keep arriving. <laughs> <laughs> so that which you were listening to has no intention of arriving it wants to keep arrive it wants to keep yeah it doesn't like arrived it wants to keep going yeah yeah so. we've arrived <laughs> It's not ex as exciting as I thought it would be. <laughs> no one's noticing me. <laughs> Do I get a badge, something? <laughs> some, some stripes or something? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyone, yeah, let's open up the. Yeah, I see, uh, uh, is it Chris? Chris has a hand up, Chris L. All right. Chris. Sorry, hang on. I'm at work. Let me. I'm gonna... Oh, yes. You are. How are you, Chris? I'm good. Man. Like I'm gonna get off... Yeah, I get This is the first time I've used it like this. So that's pretty cool. But, um, let me get off the video because I am working. I'll say what I got to say here. Right. <clears throat> um. It's, it's a, there's a question for you, and then there's something that I just wanted to share about. Uh, so, my experience, so I've been sober roughly nine years almost, and I don't take credit for any of that, because prior to that happening in my 20s, I spent a lot of time in and out, and I mean, I would work hard, and I would pray, and I would do everything to the best, be honest and all that. And at the end of the day, I just wanted to get drunk. And uh, I did, you know, repeatedly. And one, you know, the last time that I had the, that I went through that, um, six months into the sober house deal, I stopped on my way to work. And it was like, when's the last time I thought about drinking? And it, and it really blew my top off because I didn't see it go. I wasn't paying attention, you know, and, 
and it scared me because it was you know the story's so heinous that it's like if it was that easy to go how easy is it for it to just be here tomorrow so instantly the head just started going oh god tomorrow's going to be it's you know yeah you got to be on your guard kind of like what you're saying like better make sure that my acceptance is up to par and all this stuff and like um but it never came back and it hasn't come back and the fear of it coming back eventually after about four or five years I'm like why like I almost felt like I was doing a disservice to the gift that was given by acting afraid of the fact that it might come back to me it was like what am I what am I doing like or why am I doing this or why am I what's my motivation here and uh a lot of what happened with me an awareness was born out of that realization that I didn't do that I didn't take the desire to drink away it's just gone and it hasn't come back and when that happened like you were saying earlier this sort of you know not enlightenment but there's a realization that like I didn't do that and the opportunities that started taking place like you know the, my life came together and I couldn't take credit for any of this stuff when I looked at it it was something that I tried to impart to people that I sponsored that it was the one thing I just wish I could teach somebody where I was like look this the possibility that something is taking care of you you know especially if like you're sitting in AA it's like you're already sober today you know you can't take credit and uh so this idea of prayer changed where it was sort of this like or this conscious contact idea the, the concept of it started to disperse and I was kind of like I see what's happening to a certain extent it's not like I still don't struggle with this idea of self-reliance and stuff but it was like step 11 made me think it, you know everybody really romanticizes that one and sometimes I look at it and I go that step means that I am helpless and ignorant and and I just, if I ask, it seems like things, you get put where you need to get put, or you are where you need to be already. And it's like, uh, so my question for you in regards to that, because it's still something that carries me. It's still something that I carry with me. Or I don't know how to say it, but it's like, I find myself in places that I would have never guessed I was at uh, on the spiritual path. Um, and it's, and it's, amazing an amazing game. i mean i'm sitting here with you i would have never looked you up if it wouldn't have been for being introduced to non-duality and the way that happened is a whole other story but you're talking right now about <clears throat> your not, you, higher power reliance basically and so i'm asking you if if that was something that you were aware of prior to the big the big realization yes i was um yeah the thing is i felt like i was under a dark direction but i was really uh the expression of that dark direction so uh the awareness of the dark direction as the product of the dark direction doesn't go that well. It doesn't lead to any real freedom. So you basically go to fuck it quite a lot. So when I entered Delancey Street in 85, this program, a 24 hour a day living program, uh, and I spent two years there, when I left that place, I had to admit my life looked better with them running it than it did with me running it. It was very clear, very clear that what was ever, whatever was directing this life called Paul was broken, wasn't working, but would not let go of the wheels unless it was institutionalized. Yeah. I had to be in a physical sort of imprisonment to sort of, uh, in other words, my hands were still still on the steering wheel, but the radius I could turn was very limited. 
it had one of those locks on it. So it looked like I was still driving the car, but I couldn't really. Yeah. And so when I, after I left and that hit me, you know, I, I saw, and I, it was a surrender when I went into Delancey street, basically I gave up on one thumb level and put myself under their care, which is the spirit of the third step. Now I've done that a few times in life, but it never produced the effects it has like in sobriety. So I think it was a primer. And then after 10 months of a run after leaving Delancey Street, when I washed up in TA, I was very, very clear that uh, some foreign entity disease had defeated me, yes? And when I read the book and I got more intimate with the diagnosis, it led me to believe what they call self is not the ego, but it's a sense of being Paul. Yeah, not Paul having an ego or Paul's ego, but a sense of being Paul who has or hasn't an ego. And um, and that idea did what it did. And then something, then grace crashed through and uh, sort of finalized a lot of this uh, understanding. So I was convinced. Uh, and it was the most fitting uh, um, let's say the way I saw it seemed to fit the best of around my life experience. Yeah. I felt something came in, took me over, used me for transportation. And I didn't think it was a unique, uh, special phenomena. I saw tons of us get be taken over and go into recovery and keep not knowing it, pledging allegiance to the problem by the act of being identified as it. And, uh, I could see the wealth of suffering that was still being produced in people's lives, even though they were established in sobriety, sort of flipped me out in a lot of ways. Yeah. And uh, obviously the drinking and using was a way to distract from really having to look at deeper situations. So it's easy not to get to the exact nature of the wrong if you, you know, getting beat up by the wrong every day. So when the drinking and using stopped, I got to see the underlying causes and conditions. And to me, the primary one is that the mental state, which is a, a system in this event, I do not believe it's me, is obsessed or addicted to this idea of being a, an individual entity, a special someone, a doer, a feeler, a taster, a toucher, a thinker, yeah? And that bondage of self has a cherishing quality. Head loves it in a way, like I used to love cocaine. Even though cocaine treated me terribly, I loved cocaine, seriously. If you looked at the payoff cost ratio, it was terrible. The cost was terrible, but I would do anything to shoot coke. Yeah, I loved that going up the stairway of heaven, that rush and then being plopped back into hell. It seemed like it was worth, worth it, yeah? I mean, what an insane situation. So, I mean, uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. I was driven so far by the addiction, there's no going back from the revelations about that. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So I'd like to see, uh, you know, suffering is sort of a lot of sufferings made up. There is pain and there is uh, frustration and these things happen, but there's such an addition by the mental state that it can become unbearable, yeah? And I lost two members of my family to suicide. And in my view from where I was, you know, they were outmatched, the head, painted them a story 
and uh, they didn't see any way out, way out except uh, you know take you know passing on. So yeah, I'm a you know life's going to happen. It brings about a lot of effects. But the add on from the mental activity is unbelievable to the point where we're relying on an interpretation of life from a very myopic view. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, when people call me and they say that they're, they're facing life successfully, I mean, drinking successfully. And uh, then I asked them, well, and then, you know, they brought this news to me at, at a lunch because I was their sponsor. And then when I looked at them and they gave and I go, well, how much did you think about this meeting with me? Yeah. How much now every time you go to eat, do you think about a wine or a beer? You've lost a peace of mind. Yeah. We don't even understand that. Yeah. Where a lot of us are already arrested by our past, we're not going through the act of getting arrested in our out, out exterior life, but we're sentenced already, many of us. We're living a sentence that came about from, from believing that we're the doer of a lot of shit we didn't do. We're accountable for what happened through us, but hopefully at this point, you're not seeing, you're seeing the true responsible uh, factor and it's not you, yeah? I hope, I hope that breaks through, even as an, you know, a, a shallow understanding, I think it will lead to some depth if you just entertain it. Yes, so. Yeah, that's that's uh, how it was. I had the I had the sense of surrender through that experience of of Delancey Street, but I got the I found that really what makes the surrender event is what you surrender to. Yeah, and this time I surrendered to the higher power, and I followed the instructions about this way of life, and uh, grace has abounded. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think surrender is a new thing. I think it's what we surrender to makes the difference. Yeah. We've surrendered to our head quite a lot. Yeah, haven't we? We've given it our life to interpret. It's like an insurance policy that never covers anything floods, earthquakes, it basically doesn't cover shit. We just walk around thinking we're, we're, we know something, but it's bogus, yeah? And then we tie to that thing, hoping the big, big thing we're really afraid of won't come in. But we just, we leak anxiety all day. Yes. Yeah, perhaps there's a better way. Trust in the infinite rather than finite self. I would start at looking at the, fi the trust in finite self. Tell the truth about that, and then there's going to be trust in the infinite. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks. I hope that was clear. I mean, that's what happened with me. I, I really dove into the idea of surrender. The third step made complete sense to me. Complete sense. All I needed was some clarification, and I got that from Joe and Charlie seminar. And I recommend, if you're new, to listen to their tapes. It's a very, it really worked with me. I went for three years when they came around here, and then I didn't have to see them again. It, it did what it was supposed to do, yeah? Yeah got clear. See, again, like we talked about arriving, you don't have to keep getting clear. Clarity will beget clarity. Yeah. Yes. Know when to put the ball down. Something else will carry it. 
you don't run to the you don't run to the finish line ever you put the ball down and something picks it up yeah yeah so yeah i was clear and the third step made complete sense complete sense and i did my best i could based on being taken over already by this parasite yeah but i really and then i was given that event when struck sober i was given the the sense of complete demoralization followed by a hallelujah which to me is surrender yeah so i had a complete devastation and then great uh, possibility arose and then I, I've been able to entertain surrender since because I got a flavor of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. My, uh, Kerry. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thanks Paul. Um, like I said, I'm on my phone. I see like there's a hand with the number two by it. Uh, I got, I got it, Gary. All right, thank you. Kurt uh, has his own hand up. <laughs> hey, buddy. Um, you know, I want to go back to what you said about, I was in that meeting when our, our buddy from England was, uh, yeah. you know, that was, that was a really profound, that was like the parting of the veil, right? He was sharing that experience. And one of the things that he said which was really in the, in the context of what you've been talking about was he said every time he asked to be relieved of the bondage yourself, he put more proof and validity that he wasn't released. He just yeah. sustained his asking. You know, it's like was uh, just given proof and validity the fact that he wasn't released from the bondage. Yourself. And he yeah. saw he saw that. And I thought of a, you know, it's one passage in one of your books, and it's just one passage that just sticks with me, and it's this. There's an unseen obscuring of what's really happening here. See, and when he shared that experience in that meeting, boy, it there was, he saw that. Yes. And I know, I know what that uh, experience is like, you know, because the guy that was sharing, I think it was Chris was you know I, when when you get released from that the first thing that happens is your mind grabs a hold of it and then you listen to all the old ideas everybody's given you about oh you better be careful now you're in trouble you know you're just you know and but but it's such an unnatural uh state when it's new to to maneuver and live from that place because you, you've been doing that out of your mind the whole time so I just wanted to throw that in because that was a really profound um, insight that he had when he shared yeah. that experience. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. Anyways, that's all I had. Thanks, Paul. The thing is, see, <clears throat> the person who stands up in the movie theater doesn't think they're obstructing anything. They're trying, they think they're seeing better. But to everyone else, their big head's an obstruction, yeah? <laughs> now, we are really everyone else, not as a person, but as what we are, yeah? We are that which is holding the space for all this shenanigans to keep appearing. So it's difficult for people to see that they are the act of obstructing while they're attempting to promote something. It's hard to see that, but when you see it, it won't be hard to see it. You'll start, yes? Yeah. And sometimes the understanding can actually lead you to the door. It may not open it. Your own sight will open it, but the understanding has value. Yeah, has yeah. value. Oh, uh, what happened to time? Yeah, so this is a thing about these uh shares sometimes the that which is illuminating everything gets illuminated which is cool yes yeah. yeah and then you see uh the exact nature of the obstruction <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah <laughs> 
I can't be obstructing. I'm the one that's looking for it. No, <laughs> you're also the obstruction, <laughs> seemingly, as an act, anyway. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah, that's why I haven't forgotten that, because it was a perfect example, because he was praying for a future effect while he was in the present effect. So the head is completely caught up in time and it doesn't it really uh it's difficult for it to land now what hold on a second let me turn this off somebody refuses to let go they keep calling me can you hear me oh yeah maybe you should answer you know just cancel it it's probably my best friend uh scam likely he he he's travels a lot scam he's always calling me from different locations <laughs> but his name comes up no matter how he presents himself the name comes up first scam likely <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice when the thoughts were appearing in your head if there was an underlying thing scam likely <laughs> just had a little ticket tape underneath scam likely <laughs> it's calling from the vatican scam likely I'm sorry, I lost you again. Yeah. So anyone else? Anybody see hands? I can't see hands. All Big, right, Al. Big Al's got his hand up. All right, Big Al. Here comes nothing. Um, uh, I know that 420 uh, passage on acceptance is uh, incredibly popular. Oh, it's so popular. You know, acceptance is the answer. It's a big go-to. Nothing personal, Kerry. Um, and I found something in the 12 and 12 some time back that counteracts it. So I'd like to hear perhaps your take on it. I, I don't know if we have enough time for this. Um, and the line is, it's not my line. It's right out of the 12 and 12. It's in step four. Or if my disturbance was seemingly caused by the behavior of others, <clears throat> why do I lack the ability to accept conditions I cannot change. Now, I know my answer, something something about immature, childlike, inner little baby Al running around inside big Al. There's a little seven-year-old running around. He's the one who can't accept conditions. I don't want to, you can't make me, me no likey. As soon as I hear that voice, I know I'm in my childlike self. But I thought you, I thought I'd throw this up to the, to you, sir, to see what you have to say about this. Why do I lack the ability to accept? Why do I need page 420 so often? Why is it so popular? Because the head keeps <clears throat> playing its golden oldies and the head's main field of activity is in time, yesterday and tomorrow. Yes? So basically it's wanting to do something seemingly now is narrated by an expectation to give it some relevance or rationality or importance. And then the emphasis of the head goes on to the expectation, has a field day because the expectation may not actually appear for a week or two. And there you go. You get obsession with self for a few weeks and then you arrive at the, the thing and your expectations are usually not met. And therefore, now you're in disappointment. Yet, we keep relying on the unreliability to do better. And it says that massive delusion in the big book is confronted with all this failure of managing. We just, the head just comes up with, if I only manage better, it would all work out. <laughs> so basically, the system ain't going to give up the ghost. It's just going to keep on keeping on. You have to be clear about that. If you're waiting for it to change, uh, it's a dead horse. That's how we use to describe it. 
Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you're on a dead horse? Get off. <laughs> How do we get off admitting we can't? Yes. There you go. Yes, that's how it goes. Wunderbar. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we're incapable. These potentialities don't seem uh, available because something else is there. Yeah. So we're being dominated by the mental state where the problem resides. And the mental state dwells in time quite a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Of course, that's why it's an insane thing to try to convince it not to have expectations where it completely lives by expectations. <laughs> that's it's just you're talking up, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> yeah, it's it doesn't, you know. <laughs> I think acceptance is a gift. It's almost pumped into the atmosphere. And after a while of breathing it, you come, you're feeling different and you're wondering why. And then you maybe come up with the idea, oh, this is what they must mean by acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> like you walk in a room, you don't want anyone who's not there to be there. You don't want every, anyone who's be there not to be there. Yes. Just acceptance, yes. Acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. It's the easiest thing in the world. You don't have to try to change anything. You don't have to wish something that wasn't there was there. Nothing, it's easy, yeah. You get used to it. And then you watch the head that will never get used to it. And you realize the futility of trying to get the head used to it. <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't work. You can't, it doesn't work. I mean, there are people here, I'm sure people have gotten into spiritual practices while they've been recovered and they could probably share. Yeah, that uh, it's sort of like trying, you know, putting lipstick on a pig or, you know, painting legs on a snake. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> uh, a pig is a pig is a pig. It's just the way it goes. So. Uh, but again, if you think it's you, you're going to hope to change it, obviously. If you see it's not you, you lose interest in changing it. You do. If it's you, how can you lose interest in changing it? If it's not you, you lose interest in changing it. You do. And what's losing interest in changing it? Acceptance. Yeah. So that was just thinking it has to accept or shit like that. You, there's an acceptance of that and then see how it spreads in your life. See how that acceptance spreads when the urban renewal project of Paul gets canceled. And now that fucking waste of money in that dead end budget goes to living. Yeah. So now that which was enslaving you to yesterday and tomorrow's enriching your day. It's the same energy. I mean, really. Do you want to keep watering future flowers or do you want to water the flowers that are growing now? That's basically it. You want to tend to your mental garden? <laughs> or smell the roses? It's just really, <laughs> yeah, you're being employed and you can break it down to two camps, old employer, new employer, or it's sort of like AD and BC. <laughs> New employer, old employer, <laughs> not the same employer. <laughs> be very clear about that. <laughs> or you'll be doing the who song. The, the new boss is the same as the old boss. <laughs> you don't want the new employer to be the old employer wearing a new suit. <laughs> That's not going to work well. <laughs> you want a new employer. Being all powerful, it's going to take care of us. Yes. If you stay close to it, which you can't be far from everywhere and do its works well, which is a pretty loose statement. So basically, right now you may be doing its work well. Yeah, even though you may not think so. So now you fulfilled your agreement. This new power is going to take care of you. 
Isn't that your experience? Yeah. You want to change the contract? Yeah? No. Just keep signing on a day at a time. <laughs> Do one of those remote signings where you know you sign once and it just duplicates, duplicates every day. You don't have to go through the process of signing. It just flips over to the next day for 34 years. <laughs> You signed up for this. You may be flighty and flaky, but it isn't. What you've surrendered to is not flighty or flaky. It's kept its, it's kept its end of the bargain day in and day out. And it's allowed you back in after you've screwed up. No matter how bad the screw up was or how long, you're still available. It's still there. Yeah. Being, you know, all powerful. Yeah. So, you come to understand the new employer by knowing the old employer. Really. <laughs> That's how it worked with me, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyone else? Nice to see you, Al. Yeah. That's, uh, See, there can be acceptance of the head not accepting, yes? You can be in a state of acceptance, though the head that's playing you is fucking super pissed. There'll still be an acceptance, and you let it fizzle out like a fucking firecracker. But in this case, it's all fuse, no TNT. It just fizzles out, and nothing blows up. <laughs> it's like... A, bogus 4th of July explosions. There's a lot of lighting the fuse, but nothing happens. Thank God. Yeah. We used it the time with the thing. Uh, how many, this, this must be familiar. You're in an AA meeting, newcomer comes in, they share, oh, I feel so welcomed here. I feel so accepted. And you're thinking, I, I did an inventory on that guy when he walked in the head. You know, oh, that guy's a fucked up. I'm sure everyone else in the room did it. But the collective spirit that we're engaged with overrides the individual fucking mental idea. So we do practice love and tolerance when we're not loving and tolerant. We do. I take the word for the newcomer. They walked in, they felt much better far out. Yes. Hmm. All right. Kerry, Kurt, whoever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Pauline, uh, Colleen's had her hand up for a little while. Colleen, why don't you come in? Hi guys. Hi, Paul. Hey, Colleen. That's my niece. That's my, my niece's name. You, you told me that last time. Yes. Colleen um, Kelly. Wow. Really? That's well, there's a bunch of us, but yeah, you know, um, all oh, this discussion just made me think about, you know, I had a moment of clarity. I was struck sober. I didn't have any consequences for my drinking. And then I had this full on, like just, you know, pink cloud experience and um, did the steps and just, oh my God, you know, it was just awesome. And I think about well, what happened after that, you know, and what happened is like, you know, reality came in. I, I hurt my back. I was in physical pain. I lost my job. I, you know, and, and the funny thing about it is that I started journaling at that time, you know, and then I had sponsors who told me, you've got to work on your character defects. <laughs> so like, you know, I did that for 27 years <laughs> until I found out I'm not my mind. Oh my God. And I just think, you know, I, I just think, well, I mean, everybody's path is what it is. So there's no, you know, whatever. But 
I had my oldest sponsee drop me the other day and and um, it's because I had started to talk to her about this mind being the problem. And um, the, the mind was the problem before I drank. The mind continues to be the problem after I drank and after I get sober. And, you know, she, she went and got another sponsor because, you know, it's just too hard to, she wants to stay in that drama. She wants to stay in that drama of the mind. And I don't know, it's just so interesting. Like there's such freedom knowing that, and you, and you said it, there's not much else to do when you, when you realize um, that's never been the deal. Like I'm, I, I'm perfect, actually. I'm perfect the way I am. I mean, I, yeah, that, yeah, don't say that in an AA meeting. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I don't know. It, you know, my message now is that, um, and also there's a thing about the mind, you know, that you're kind of told, well, at least I was when I was a newcomer, that it's something you have to fight you know, and that resistance just creates more resistance. You know, it's so much easier to just say, thanks for sharing, you know, okay. Yeah, I know, I've, yeah, I've heard that, you know. Yes. So anyway, that's just my, my, uh, my share. Thank you. Well, thank you, Colleen. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. The thing is like sometimes when uh, we say we're perfect. It's not, uh, we're not perfect as those defect of character. Yeah. Right. There's a perfection underlying and surrounding everything. Yes. So yeah. it's not the, that which can appear to be imperfect is now not, is now perfect. It's not like that, but a lot of times it's heard that way. So, and there's a thing when I lived in Australia, uh, there was an interesting thing they had, uh, like a, a collective psychology of, they called it the, uh, the tall, the tall poppy syndrome, where the Australian society, they don't mind having celebrities and athlete stars, but they don't like anyone really better than anyone else. So the tall poppy would always get cut down. So sort of like when you say I'm perfect, and people are identified as the body and they have a true belief they're not perfect, they're gonna want you to cut down that tall poppy. <laughs> it's a syndrome, as they say. So uh, <laughs> I, I think the suffering self continues until it's just, you know, it, it's just, there's the drama of the suffering in that goes on with people. It's like, they can't let go of that draw. I know oh, I could. Excitement. There's an I addiction could. to excitement. It's very exciting to write over and over, God, re you know, remove this and then wait around for God to remove it somehow and look for all the signs and, and no, no, it's not happening fast enough. You know, it's just, yeah, that, that's what went on for me until I popped. So grateful. Well, yeah. But again, yeah. everyone has different locations for the waterhole. Yeah. yeah. Maybe when you arrive, they don't see the water and they're looking for the water. So that's how it goes. It fit. It's really weird, though, because I've been in the same place for so many years and I'm looked at as this old timer. And now everybody's like asking me, well, where are you? How are you? And it's just really it's it's weird because I'm just not part of the thing that I was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, this happens. It's sort of like if someone meets you in a, like an intensive care ward and then sees you later walking around very spry and flexible, they're wondering why you're not with them in the intensive care ward anymore exactly that's exactly how it feels 
like I just tell people all this peace I have and it's like you know I talk about this peace that it came from the promises from meditating you know from the promises it's the promises it happened to me you know and they oh my gosh but what's wrong is what else is going on you know (laughs) (laughs) okay nothing (laughs) but every you know the whole thing really when when all is said and done what you are speaks louder than what you say or they say so there you go Yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah so it's it's interesting phenomena with people like a friend i think john from florida so john uh was sharing i'm not doing it verbatim but he was talking about how these ideas that happen we share here seems to go better or easier in over into newcomers than it does with people that have been sober for a while oh definitely that's a definite phenomena definitely of, and it's just how how it happens it's all right i mean i don't i mean well, uh, i think especially nowadays i think they're more open well it's just again you could well it's very explainable though because if something really something played a huge role in you doing a whole lot better you get jealous and guarded of it yeah and so sometimes you perceive something as a threat to that which it isn't but it's just a typical like uh you know spot on the eye how we look at things so yeah it's all part and parcel of the whole thing that's why we have these talks. If I was sharing here where I live, no one would come. They've all seen me. They're totally interested in what they're doing, you know? Yeah. No one here, no one on the Zoom is from my community here. And when we have live meetings, very rarely do they come. And when they've come, they only come once because they, uh, it's just not for them. So there you go. So, yeah, I, you know, and I'm grateful you have it because, see, I don't want to leave AA. I, I love AA. And, I, yeah. and I, I know exactly what you're saying about what goes on in a room of AA. Unconditional love is just there. And it's magical. But yet, you know, I'm seeing things so different, other things so differently about it. You know, it's just a, it's just total. Yeah. It's like a surrender beyond. It's like what's in the book, really? I mean, it is in the book. Yes. Yes. Turning well, your will into life. What else is there? Your it's will into life. It's principles before personality. So. Yeah. Yes. So I don't have. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't put persons before principles. I just go with principles. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 But uh, hey, if it's working yeah. for you, great. You know, this is. <laughs> This message is for something was seeming, you know. When I figured out, well, I have no free will. A lot of unsuspecting stuff in all of us. So, <laughs> unsuspecting. Right, but when I, it's like a whole nother ball game when you really know you have no free will. You, it's just a whole, it's just the, it's total liberation. It's just, well, yeah. you know, whatever. And, you know, it's liberation uh you know one man's uh food is another man's poison so that's <laughs> just the way it goes <laughs> that's why we have these talks we don't go out proselytizing to well, people I have, who don't hear it I, we just present a platform if you're interested well right. let's good. go yeah i'm totally into it but i'm never i'm not into <laughs> you know yeah it's just yeah yeah i know i've tried to talk and i need to just stop i i you uh, know it'll probably be better yeah yeah i know yeah it's just weird because i'm in transition i mean this is 20 i'm i've been sober 28 years almost 29 years in the same place in the same groups you know yeah yeah so, it's kind of yeah. odd they were like my family they were my family that i grew up you know, in these groups. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's quite a transition for me, you know? Mm, yes, yes. I understand that. I I was lucky. I was odd since the beginning, so. <laughs> well, I was kind of odd, but maybe not as odd <laughs> as you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a... <laughs> so. Yeah, Thanks, but Paul. I can understand that. Yes, it, I can understand that. But hey, you answer whatever's knocking on your door. So. I don't have a choice. Exactly. I mean, that's what I told my little sponsee that I've had for 12. I said, you know, I don't have a choice on the path that I'm on. I can't go back with you, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they, they you know, you don't know how you're being used. I mean, yeah. Uh -uh. It's a, I remember I had a, a thing compressed to a five-minute event. I had the privilege of doing these fourth-step workshops in San Francisco. And I had this person, a new person, who was pretty wrecked. And he just went off. He just started screaming at me, almost had to get <laughs> held back and everything. And it, we gave him like five minutes, and then he ended up asking me to be a sponsor <laughs> yeah. at the end of the tirade. And it was a perfect compression of a lot of stuff shown <laughs> in like a five-minute segment. It was perfect. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> in this thing, you're never at the end point, yes, in a way. So it's things are happening, and you don't know how things are being used, really. I always feel... There's an ultimate value in everything. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, honey. Thanks. I, yes. You got it, Harry? See, now that now if Amelia talks to me, asks me, have you have you talked to any of your family members? I'll say yes. I talked to Colleen Kelly today on the Zoom. So thank you. See you. You uh you <laughs> You played in a role you didn't suspect. There you go. So. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Kurt, anyone? That's it. Yeah. Annette's, Annette and Gil have their hands up. We're, All uh, right. Yeah. Get, hit Annette and then Gil. Yes. Go ahead. Annette, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. I outlined my question on the chat because I don't have much time to talk, but I just wanted a clarification of a point Paul was making about. About, we got lost. Someone, someone who was your sponsor sitting down. I'm not sure if you were saying he was comfortable with drinking or not, or just the thinking of the drinking or what the point was. The point was he was he had nine years of sobriety. I was his sponsor. Okay. He called me up to go to lunch with him and he broke me in the news that he'd been drinking successfully for the last few weeks. And I listened to what he had to say and everything. And then at the end I said, Well, how much did you think about going to lunch with me? And he said, Well, and I said, Well, what hap what happens now when you go to dinner or lunch? Do you uh, does your head think about should it be wine? Shouldn't it be wine, beer? I said you've you've lost the uh, peace of mind. You've introduced this possibility again into your life, and it may only take an inch, but it may it'll, it may take a mile tomorrow. So, this is uh, when people tell me they're doing something successfully. It's on a level of like bank account. You know, haven't lost my job. But what about the interior success of enjoying peace of mind? It's feeling yeah, because I, I I see people. I I've been hearing people talking about thinking about like being potentially exposed to situations where they might have drunk before, like going out or going to a social function at work and yada yada. And I think that those thoughts just are destructive. They destroy those people's peace of mind about the fact that they're sober. Somehow. Well, it's not the thoughts, it's the believing in the thoughts. So right. if you don't believe in the thoughts, you see it as propaganda or like an advertising campaign. If you're believing in the thoughts, there's a seriousness that has an effect. Yeah, so this is about 
recognizing the problem's main activity is of the mind, which is the thoughts. And the sense of the ownership of the thoughts give it give the thoughts a lot of weight. So when it's there's a believing that you're the thinker or you're the thought about, then you're listening to those thoughts quite quite avidly. Yeah, because it's all about you. The recognition that it's not about you brings a lot of beautiful byproducts. And one of them is thoughts are seen more as thoughts, not as yours. Feelings are seen more as feelings, not as your feelings. Yes. And you'll know the tree by the fruit. You'll be traveling lighter and you'll know something's working. Yes. Thank you. So that's the point. So a lot of people who are sitting and who are sober today, their head is saying they won't be. And the belief in that they won't be thought is overriding their enjoying sobriety at the moment. Yeah, this is the bondage of self. Yes. It's a slavery. Even when you've been set free, you're still seemingly enslaved. Yes. Yes. So yes, that's Thank why you. it's important to see the exact natures of the wrong. My feeling is because it leads to a lightness that you can't have as the exact nature of the wrong. You're not going to travel lighter as self. <laughs> it's always, it just, it lends a heaviness to whatever's going on. It just does. So uh, I know people who have lots of money, but they're super anxious about money. So when is it going to be enough? Yeah. I see people sharing with the same anxiety a person shares uh, about not having a place to stay tonight concerning their fourth house they're buying. It's the same fucking anxiety, yet the the need for shelter is completely taken p- care of, but still the head is completely flipping out about the fourth house. Yes, the head, it has nothing to do. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with what's happening and enlarges and puts it out of proportion. It just goes off, yeah. Yeah, you just have to know its nature because you're under its effect. It's wise to know what's going on or it's going to keep going on unbeknownst to you. Like it says, without knowing it, isn't faith having has everything to do with everything without knowing it? Yeah. Or what can a failed system show you? It's failed. Yeah. Who would be suspicious of something that you've given the position to tell you about life? Well, we are now. That's the starting point. Yes. So you start recognizing, hey, I have had, I have been had by thoughts and I have been had by my thoughts. Being had by a thought is like a very short interval, a very second or two. Having been been had by my thought leads to action many times which leads to consequences that can last, that can put a tattoo on me that can last for 50 years. Yes. There's a, there's a huge difference between a thought and my thought. Huge. Yeah. So there's going to be thoughts. Let's get clear. Yeah. There's going to be feelings. Let's get clear. They may not always be great. Let's get clear. But what's going to distort the feeling and distort the thought is the my. The my thought, the my feeling. That's where we play the role of the house of mirrors. Yes, we put a thought in there and now we see it as my thought. It can become gargantuan. Feeling, my feeling, it can seem it's going to last for 30 years. Yes, it's a house of mirrors. We're, we distort everything the head yeah come to know that because you're making mountains out of molehills why did you what do you think that means when they say that the head makes mountains out of molehills all right you want to see that the mountain called thought molehill thought mountain my thought problem Molehill, my problem, mountain. Yes, 
Same problem, a problem. The problem hasn't changed, but the size of it has changed. How? Us. We give everything all the meaning it has. You better be fucking clear sooner or later about that. Yeah, Because that's seeing your role in things. Just like the great relief that came to us when we saw our role in things in the first inventory of AA, where there are deeper inventories, which are living ones, where you see your role in things. And if you like it or not, or if you've heard it or not, from a book called The Course in Miracles, it says your role in things is you and I give everything all the meaning it has. That's a huge role (laughs) in things. It's a huge one. You're giving everything all the meaning it has. What? Yes. I didn't even see that I stepped, you know, I made him pass on that guy's girlfriend and that's why he punched me in the face 20 minutes later. I refused to see that. Well, baby steps. Then you start seeing, wait, I'm giving everything all the meaning it has all day? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I know. Now you do. There you go. Yeah. Isn't everything, it's in a place of things and locations, light can be misdirected. Yeah. The light can fall on some places and thumb things, yet be blind to other places and other things. Yes. We've got to surrender the direction of our light to the higher power. It's much more expansive, it's much more panoramic, it sees a whole lot more. Yes. Light's falling on everything, but the light we're representing is falling on things, interior things like feelings and thoughts, exterior things. At, and when it's driven by the mental activity, it denies a lot of other things as being worthy of light, let's say other people. So you have an incredible self-centeredness and sense of entitlement. You can't put yourself in other people's shoes. Yes? That's misdirected light, really. There's light, complete light. And here in this dreaming, there's directed light called interest and attention. And what's directing most of our interest and attention is from the problem. The problem resides in the mind, the mental activities. Yes? You can't use light to get out of light. We are the light. Let's let's just tell the truth about shit as best we can. And admit that we're not managerial quality and we're outmatched. Yeah? Who would who would have thought that there would be 24 hours in a fucking day? Who would thought who would think that the gear can shift at any moment? One minute can seem like an eternity. Another minute goes fast like super fast. What's going on here? As if we're the, the innocent bystander of an event. We're it. When you're doing something you love, time goes really fast usually. When you're doing something you hate, it seems like, what the fuck? Yeah? You think time has got gears? You know, it slows down? No. It's us. We're dreaming time. It doesn't slow down for everyone when I'm having a drag. It doesn't. Does it? It's a subjective experience. That was my problem. I had such a sense of entitlement. I'd go to work and then I'd say, I don't want to be at work and I'd leave. So I'd get fired constantly. When do you make it to lunch usually? It seemed unbearable. I got two more hours. I can't take it. <laughs> that was not going to be a brick in a, in a successful life. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Happy to be here. Let's anyone else. Oh, yes. Gil. And then we got, we'll go. we got Gil and it's uh, noon. So just to let you know the time. It's noon already. All right, let's do this last one, Gil. 
Okay. Um, I'm going for serenity this time. What? You said serenity. Yes. So is serenity having neither expectations or acceptance? As I could justify my accepting, I can justify accepting I have expectations and I'm left with no serenity. And no, you're left with serenity. I'm left with it. Yes, of course. Because I'm thinking, I'm, I'm wondering, the serenity stand alone. It's not tied to anything. Bound, it's bound free. Serenity comes from life in its own accord, not bound to self or free. It's free of self. Yes, but serenity is of here isn't always available because we're up the ass of self. Okay. Yes. So yeah. basically, the ass of self is filled with expectations. Yeah. Yeah. And it what comes I mean out is a lot of disappointments. So the I, when you lose interest in in the outcome, you're here now, which you cannot not be. And what's here now is serenity, and you'll probably run into it. But if I have, if I had, if I don't have, if I go into a situation without expectations, well, your head is always going to have expectations as it's going through a situation. That's what we're saying. We're saying you're not the one who has the expectation; it's the head. But to try to tell the head not to have an expectation, its whole story why it's doing anything is based on a fucking reward or something. Yeah, which is an expectation. Okay, good. It's That's like my, my dog, Amelia, my girlfriend, does a little move with her hand, like she's going to give the dog a treat. The dog immediately sits down because that's what she usually does to get the treat. Now, she has an expectation she's going to get the treat. So when Amelia does it eight times and there's no treat, it perplexes the little mental activity of the dog. Yes, and it gets frustrated and gets a little bit pissed off because it has a sense of entitlement. So, yeah, so it's looking for, it's not sitting down for the fun of sitting down. It wants a treat. That's the deal. <laughs> Keep, don't keep asking for my poor until you return something. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is idea is the head is going to expect because it's always looking into time. Yeah. Usually some of some people's heads expects the worst. Some people's heads, you know, thinks they, they have a sense of entitlement. They always should get the best. But in fact, the head is just trying to be get more of itself. Yeah. So if there's an expectation, it spawns a disappointment, which spawns a resentment, which spawns a, a reaction, a, a, a text of fucking putting my foot in my mouth on and on and on. See, the beautifulness of abstinence is you don't start. Yeah. In this way, how you don't start is not stopping the expectations, is seeing you, you're not the one who has the expectations. They're not of you, they're of the mental state. Yes? Thank God okay. you're not of the mental state. <laughs> there you go. And then serenity. Serenity isn't something that's produced, it's something that's recognized. It's always available. It's just usually where we set up requirements to meet it. So then it seems to be unavailable based on our requirements. <laughs> yeah. So in a sense, I'm going through life thinking I'm the parasite, not the host. So I'm feeding myself all this bullshit because I think I need this. Well, you're not. The head is. The yes. head is. Uh, Yes, remember, you're, you're not being fed by you. You're being fed by something else that states it's you. Yeah. yeah. It does. It's something. Why do you see? The head is sort of playing to an audience, yeah? You don't have the thoughts appearing on your forehead. 
<laughs> so everyone yeah. around you can see they're playing inside. It's like you're in a little private theater. And uh, the audience has a role in a way. It's yay or nay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's yay, it's an act 12 play. It just goes on and on. <laughs> if it's nay, things, <laughs> things can take a turn. It can turn into a documentary. It can do a lot of things, yeah? And you, hopefully you get in the habit of nay concerning the mental advertising to get you riled up and bring you to its idea of surrender, which is fuck it, yeah? If you have a nay to that, uh, you'll be surrendered to the other power, yes? Yeah, I, and so, so that's where I go from a molehill to a mountain. Hmm? So that's where I go from the molehill to mountains. Oh, the molehills to the mountains, yes. Again, you're not doing that. You, you're, you're the seeing of it being done, but you're not the doer of it. That's really what we're attempting to get across, yeah? Okay. The head makes mountains out of molehills, yes. Do you make mountains out of molehills? No. That must mean I'm not the head, yes. <laughs> there you go, that's simple, okay. eh? Yeah, that's simple, thanks. Yeah, well, it can be just like the other grooves were made by repetition. This can help you. Really. You know, the cows don't go to the trough. The cows go use the well-worn path, and usually there's a trough at the end. Yeah? But the cow is conditioned to go down the well-worn path. Yeah, and then he runs into the trough. So the well-worn path in the mental condition, there's no food in the trough. <laughs> You're just brought to an empty well over and over and over again, expecting different results. Yeah. So if you now make a repetition, you create another well-worn path and maybe the cow of the head will go that way. Yeah. And you'll travel lighter that day because the head won't be so heavy. Yes? Yeah. There you go. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Is that it for everybody? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Paul. You want to say goodbyes? Uh, yes, of course. I want to say goodbye to the Lighthouse, one of my favorite uh, buildings in the world, Lighthouses. You didn't know that about Paul Hedman, did you? There you go. A personal bit of information yeah <laughs> all right michael stacy nice to see you michael as always tom up in washington pleasure john florida alex jacob hudson valley we got kerry in hawaii yes we got gail oh it's the it's happening <laughs> there is yes oh looking nice gail Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. How long are you going to keep it? You can just keep it. We just go with the flow. Oh, good. All right, good. <laughs> I like that, honey. Mickey, as always, fantastic. Maria, nice to see you, Maria. We got Deborah, a pleasure having you back, Deborah. Kurt Z, as always. Al in Vegas. Uh, we got Rob in Louisville. That's fantastic, Rob. I'm happy, uh, yeah, that you seemingly are outside free. We got Steve C, San Diego. Nice to see you, Steve. Roman, Germany, pleasure. Tommy, I don't know where, blank screen. Stefan on having never left. Nina, there she is. All's well, Nina. Yes, good, very good. Tim, nice to see you, Tim. Jack, oh yeah, Jack. I like that, Jack, yes. We got Kim, hi right, Kim, nice to see you, honey. Ooh, we just lost somebody, Colleen Kelly with the little dog. We got Jess here, Jess from Ireland. Nice to see you, Jess. Jeffrey from Seattle, always a pleasure when you drop in. Gil from the Lighthouse, very nice. 
Uh, let me see. We got Sena, Bruce, Oliver, uh, Dave B. Mm, I think that's it. Uh, wait a minute. Yes. Hey, listen, thank you so much. We'll be here today at 4.30 Pacific time. Just go through the website on the on Zen Bitslap. It's I'll be opening the place up at 10 to 4.20. So, uh, yeah. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. Cheers.